Why is it that when we're on the brink of losing everything, we find something, or in some cases, everything to gain? Think for a moment about an eight-year-old girl with big glasses and a funny-looking haircut. She spends lots of time in the hospital because she has hydrocephalus, a complicated medical condition where the cerebral spinal fluid doesn't circulate as it should, causing pressure to build up on the brain. When this happens, it's hard to keep your balance, it's hard to walk, it's hard to see, it's hard to do a lot of things. The reality is, this little girl doesn't look much like the other little girls at school most of the time, and she can't do all the cool things they can do. She has to wear a big hockey helmet whenever she's lucky enough to actually skate with the other kids. They laugh, and the little girl feels sad. But through it all, she's lucky. Somehow, she holds on to the notion that there's a lot of possibility on the other side of this challenge, and she's determined to find it. Now, what if I were to tell you that this little girl was me? As I became a child psychologist, it was then that I looked back at the people and experiences in my life and how they came together to make me resilient. A central theme which emerged is one of challenge and one of impossibility, and how both show up in so many ways. Nobody's immune to challenge. Nobody's immune to impossibility. The central thread in it all that we all share is the beauty and the power of resilience and the ability to find our ordinary within the extraordinary. <clears throat> as I reflect back on the lessons I learned as a child and those I've learned in my practice as a psychologist, I'm struck by just how powerful it is to teach our kids to find their own ordinary as a catalyst for helping them to live fully within their own unique context. And I'd like to share with you now five lessons that will show you why. First, teach a child to know their limits and to be content within those limits. When I was a kid, I wanted so badly to be able to hang upside down on the hanging bar like the other girls at birthday parties and during backyard playdates. But it just wasn't possible because of my hydrocephalus. But I wanted so badly to just be like everybody else and to fit in. So there was this one birthday party where I remember I did bounce on a trampoline. And I bounced and I bounced and I bounced. And for a brief moment, I felt normal and free. I had fun. But soon, the world started spinning and I started throwing up, and I didn't stop for a week. My head just couldn't handle things like that, simple pleasures the others could do so easily and so freely just weren't possible. And it was in these moments that I learned the true meaning of challenge. And over time, though, it was accepting what my body couldn't do, which opened up the possibility for me to focus on what I could do, and this really created a whole new world for me. Next, finishing last can sometimes mean finishing first. This is not always the easiest lesson to teach our kids, but one which is really important. I arrived in Seattle following college graduation for a 32-day bike trip from Seattle to Denver with a group called Cyclists Ending Hunger. I spent four years in college recovering my physical condition through long miles biking and swimming. And I didn't take this lightly, given the dire predictions of five years prior when I'd experienced a major medical setback. Every single day on this trip, I pushed myself beyond what even I thought was possible, riding 80 to 110 miles at a time, through unforgiving headwinds and mountain passes. I finish last most days, dead last, sometimes by hours. But to me, it really didn't matter. I was out there riding and doing my best within my own unique context. And in my mind, 
This was a huge win. See the good around you while you manage the challenge. I was reminded of this idea again and again as I finished my training in clinical psychology at a pediatric burn hospital. I was working with kids and families who had experienced catastrophic injuries which would change them forever in ways that most of us can't even imagine. One young girl had lost her eyesight as a result of a terribly traumatic burn to her face and upper body. She'd never again be the same, but yet she found the strength and the courage one afternoon on the rehabilitation unit to give back to the other patients by singing to them, sharing the gift of her voice. And I, as I reflect back on this moment, I'm struck by just how powerful it was for everyone on the unit that afternoon, patients and staff alike. And it reminds me once again of the importance of seeing the good around us and holding on to the power of human connection. Believing in a child and what that child has to offer is the most powerful gift we can give them. My father once said to me while we were playing golf years ago, it's not how far you can hit the ball that really matters. It's the fact you can hit the ball at all. It's working as hard and as well as you can within your given context that'll drive you towards your potential, nothing else. And as I look back on those years wearing that big hockey helmet while the other kids laughed, in some ways it feels like yesterday, and in others it feels like a hundred years ago. Sure, it was hard, miserable really, but at the same time, I was lucky. I had people who believed in me despite some very real challenges. Remember, just being ordinary really is extraordinary. It took becoming an adult and having kids of my own to realize just how important it is to teach our kids the power of ordinary. Because isn't that what kids really want? To be ordinary and to fit in? To be able to do the things their friends can do without worry and without limitation? By allowing our kids to be ordinary, we're allowing them to find their own unique context along with the ability to flourish within that context. If we're always pushing them to do more and to be more, we're missing this beautiful opportunity to allow our kids to be ordinary, whatever that looks like for them. And as I look back at my eight-year-old self, this is all I ever wanted. And if we think about it, really think about it, the ordinary really is extraordinary. So as it turns out, I never really did get to be like everybody else. But I could argue that it was better in many ways. I learned to appreciate my physical abilities in a way that I'm not sure would have been possible had they not been taken away. Still, it was this elusive ability to be ordinary within an at times extraordinary set of circumstances that meant everything to me. And for me, and many of the kids and families I've worked with as a psychologist over time, challenge has been about medical Ill illness and physical limitation. But if we think about it, really think about it, the power of ordinary applies across the spectrum of challenge our kids will face. Learning disabilities, bullying, not making the team, failing a test, moving, divorce, losing a friend, and the list goes on and on. So how then do we help our kids to find their ordinary within the extraordinary in order to live a resilient life? We teach them to embrace their own unique context and the gifts they already have. We teach them to see the good around them and to hold on to the power of human connection. 
we teach them to see the possibility on the other side of challenge. And we give them the tools they'll need to meet the challenges they'll inevitably face along the way. And what if we do these things and we find that ordinary really is extraordinary? If you can do one thing to help a child to believe in herself and to live fully within her own unique context, do it. Help a child to see the possibility on the other side of challenge. Help them to notice the good around them and to embrace the power of human connection. All it takes is one person, one genuine connection, to make a huge difference. So let's all go now and help our children, all of them, to find the extraordinary by first helping them to find their ordinary, whatever that looks like for them. Thank you.